trees, roots, soil, sky. There's something that keeps it all together in this place, where songs linger in the wind and all tales evoke memories of delusions and dreams. This is Hogoland, where nature meets passion and passion meets music. A place where a very special festival takes place, just like a hazy dream, a place in between, where you can always come back. It's good to be back, in fact. Um, just arrived to the hotel and it just feels so marvelous to be here. It's Everything's already so cozy and warm. Before I go outside, I'd like just to show you something that it's kind of... I don't know, it's it's an interesting fact about this, this festival. Basically, if we look at the map, this is where the festival is, here. If you start to unzoom the map, I've never seen there's something happening on that corner of Norway. Right there is Hagazon and where the festival takes place. As you can see, it's a quite peaceful city and it's, you know, not much. It feels like not much is going on. There's this little soft rain, you know that you almost don't feel it, but it's there. It's really not that comfortable after a while. Well, you probably don't see me right now, but uh, driving to the venue. Hello, nice to see you. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hi, Charles. Again. <laughs> Back in the day, this wasn't a venue. This was a herring place. This is where we are right now, actually, on this floor. I saw uh, the prog uh, uh, environment here in town. They started a prog club, in fact, five, five, six years ago. It started to be a sort of an environment on, on Facebook, a group there. Uh, so actually, I took uh, contact with Knut and said, shit, we should uh, start the prog festival. It's the earliest known 8-bit music. They sampled this uh, song <laughs> and they did just... I wanted to make a group where the primary the motivation would be just to have a physical sensation of a concert. twice there will be like this one fucking epic moment where like, everybody just feels exactly the same I'm never really like doing too much philosophy over <laughs> what my dreams are I'm driven by by kicks we wanted something in Aspic. There is a book about cricket called Arabs in Aspic. And we found out, hey, that sounds kind of cool. 
we didn't mean, we don't mean anything bad with it, but people might... What? Arabs in Aspen? Yeah. No problem. <laughs> it's a book about cricket. Dictator. I uh, play the bass and I sing in Tusmerke. It's uh, Norwegian and it means twilight. And um, we've got two concerts at the festival, one for grown-ups and one for children. We are animals who live together in a, in a tree, uh, a badger, a squirrel and a crow. And one day we wake up and there's no tree. The entire forest is wiped out and we need to find a new place to live. So we go into the city. We're trying to, to spread our way of thinking, our worldview, which is a deeply pessimistic worldview, but really humorous at the same time. We are very ambivalent to, uh, towards our culture today. We are very critical of a lot of the things that are going on. Uh, but at the same time, we love to be able to laugh and to dance and to be happy, even though we don't expect a happy end result. festival vibe going on and it's characteristic from this place and this festival that uh, everyone everyone comes together for the music and that's beautiful to see really to be here together with uh, with like my band with Arabs and uh, together with Edgar this means a lot to me when I seen the this big blue painting uh, on the stage, on the scene, and it was... Uh... In the big cities, it's like uh, people are like, wow, they don't talk about things like this. But here, it was not, it didn't even came one word about this, that uh, it's a naked body. The thing that is most important for me is the progressive rock thing. Because I was, you know, I started playing in the early mid 60s and I was in this time when it suddenly was allowed to do anything. When I was a kid, all the hit lists was just verse, refrain, verse, refrain, and maybe a third part, and then verse and refrain, refrain, refrain. When I was young, that the world should get bigger with with uh, with the technology, television, uh, communications, all this. But actually, in my opinion, the world has gotten smaller. It's just so interesting to uh, this place, all the things that this place has, and uh, it's like this magical wooden house in the middle of nowhere. It means everything. Uh, this to me is so important. It gets inside your soul and your heart and it makes you react in certain ways. You know, sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. But it, it doesn't matter as long as it makes you react. That's the main thing. It's such a huge part of who I am. Uh, it's a part of me. I've done it all my life since I was a kid. And I couldn't imagine a life without doing music. trying to show or point to the music that the human being um, is 
uh, being uh, immersed in uh, a world full of uh, wonderful, untangible, invisible, and un understandable things. I love to meet people and hear their stories. And uh, I've got some, lots of fans here, obviously, and, and, and a lot of goodwill. Flowers in the bowl, coming new to bloom. I mean, who wants to sit I in a hotel with a, a fabulous place like this with the audience and people coming to say hello and just having a beer with folks? I love that because actually, um, unlike a lot of people who see themselves as entertainers with the division between themselves and the audience. I feel that if I don't relate and connect with the audience, what am I going to write about? What am I going to sing about? I want to actually represent them. On the day, all of the graves will open and all of the good souls will fly up to heaven. And I'm going to be stuck down here with you lot, aren't I? There's a crowd here that really loves that kind of music. And it's very seldom like like this. The bands and the public are together. It's like a, a really, uh, I mean this in a good way, a really nerdy place. <laughs> you know, like uh, uh, people are really into music. If not anything else but but music, you know. It's just good to get travel all this way and do a show that people enjoy and, and that you that you know is is good. In Norway, people always remind me of great stories that they were involved in, in with the band from long ago. Uh, little tiny things like uh, some guy came and said, "Do you remember when I drove your van?" Because uh, the other van had broken down and we were stuck in the snow in near Bergen and yeah, if, as you said before, if you just do the gig and go to the hotel, you miss all of that. A small remote place like this, this is happening. And I think that the world is like that. It's, it's happening, things like this and different things all over the world, but we don't know about it. So we think that, yeah, we think the place is remote. But for those people here tonight in this place, it's not remote, it's very close. I think life is more like this. There's a lot of good things happening between people in remote places. And they're not remote because they're near to those who are there.